After a hiatus, I'm back with another top 5. Hopefully taking time off house to find new content for the channel. I'd like to thank the RUFOs community for most of my findings, you guys are the best. That said, let's begin. The Metapod UFO Allegedly filmed in Spain, this video shows no obvious signs of CGI. The footage took credit by storm and quickly became quite popular. A thread popped up with comparisons to many other UFO sightings. People even went as far as comparing it to ancient art. Another user replicated the object using a 3D render. Of course, the object could in fact be something much more prosaic, like this inflatable structure. But I truly think it deserves a spot in today's top 5. Barnold Zwick UFO Most of the daily Reddit posts are of unimpressive lights in the sky, with no acceleration or even any point of reference. But a family in Barnold Zwick in the UK caught quite an interesting object on video. Their reactions are also super general. There's not even any more of them. Oh my god, it's just... Is there... Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> I'm in awe. I swear to God, I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen anything like it. Don't like everyone, that. shut up! Why? Oh my God! 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 He's leaving. Shut up. Everyone. A UFO. I'm not joking. It literally came out of nowhere. HD Triangle. His question for you is based on what you know, Lou, and your definition of a UFO UAP, are there any pictures and videos taken by ordinary people then posted on social media platforms such as Twitter that are legitimate unidentified flying objects such as the objects seen by the military pilots, astronauts, government agencies, and sensitive space platform? So basically, uh, have you seen anything on open source that you say, wow, yeah. that's that's credible? Yeah, and, and the problem with it is, is that... that the government recognizes it. Um, there are some very authentic UAP images. When people say, oh, they're all grainy and blurry. No, they're not. <laughs> There's some that are really clear and are very authentic uh, because we can look at the date and timestamp and the metadata on the video. We can then correlate that to any other type of assets that may be in the area. And, you know, we're, it turns out that, yeah, we're picking something up that came across, you know, let's say the Pacific Ocean. All of a sudden, someone in San Diego is, I had this real funny light doing these weird things in the backyard and all of a sudden you realize, ooh, man, they got it on camera. Um, yeah, there, there are some very, very, there's one in particular, I, uh, I, I probably can't talk about it, um, but there's one uh, of a triangle uh, and it's at night and it's uh, not just three points of light. I mean, you can see the skin of the aircraft. Uh, you can see a lot. And uh, to the point where some of our folks were like, well, we, should we take it off, off of the internet? Like, no, don't take it off the internet. <laughs> Leave it up. You know, that's not your video to take down. That's a private citizens, you know? And yes, they got a great video of a UAP. Congratulations, you know? We should probably give them an award. Don't, don't take the video down. Of course, the previous clip led to some serious speculation on what the footage might be. One of the best footage to come out that fit the description was sadly filmed after Lou was in charge of the UFO program. But it makes you wonder, is there too good to be true footage right in front of us?
Holloman Air Force Base UFO. With me is author and filmmaker Robert Emmenegger, uh, and former security manager and chief of requirements for the audiovisual program at Norton Air Force Base, Paul Shartle. Gentlemen, Mr. Emmenegger, how did you get involved with UFOs? Well, it was in 1973 when I was vice president at Gray Advertising, and I took time out and went to Norton Air Force Base to explore subjects for television specials related to the Defense Department. While discussing several of the subjects, UFOs came up, and Paul here told us about a film of a landing of alien crafts at uh, Holloman Air Force Base about three years earlier. What did you see, Mr. Shuttle? I saw footage of three disc-shaped crafts. One of the crafts landed and two of them went away. Why did it land? It appeared to be in trouble because it oscillated all the way down to the ground. However, it did land on three pods. A sliding door opened, a ramp was extended, and out came three aliens. <laughs> what, what did they look like? Well, they were human-sized. They had odd gray complexion and a pronounced nose. They wore tight-fitting jumpsuits, thin headdresses that appeared to be communication devices, and their hands, in their hands, they held a translator, I was told. Yeah. A Holloman base commander and other Air Force officers went out to meet them. Now you actually saw these aliens on the film? Yes. This film footage sounded very, very special, and we wanted to use it as the ending of our television special. And did you? Was it in your special? Well, although the Pentagon had been very, very cooperative all the way, at the last minute the film was confiscated and we lost the whole finale of our show, but what I saw and heard was enough to convince me that, you know, the phenomenon of UFOs is real, very real. Mr. Shardle, what did your superior officers tell you? I was told it was theatrical footage the Air Force has purchased to make a training film. Well, that sounds plausible, doesn't it? Well, if it were a, a uh, theatrical film, why didn't I have a record of this? It was my job to keep accurate records of all audiovisual purchases. Is there any other reason that you feel this was not a theatrical film? Yes, it was too real. The people who were shooting that day were Air Force personnel. Lucky for us, the day they were shooting, they were doing an acceleration test. Yeah, well, it's too bad we couldn't get that footage from the Air Force. Gentlemen, thank you very You're much for being with us. Then to put the documentary out, and then I find out that there's eight seconds of the Holloman Air Force Base film in the film. So Bob's my friend. I phone him up, Bob. There's eight seconds of film in there. And he goes, well, yeah. And I said, you told me to hold the film. You told me it was sent back to the Pentagon. And he said, well, it did. And he told me this whole story about the guy going across the country in this small Datsun, taking the film back to the Pentagon. I said, but there's eight seconds of film in the documentary. And then he said the key words. He said, but it didn't show anything. And I said, oh no, he said, it's background. And I said, background? What do you mean it's background? And he said, it didn't show anything. And what it is, is you see the hills of Holloman, and you see this object, this brilliantly lit object at six o'clock in the morning coming over the hills, but it's in a distance. So it, you don't see it close up, and you don't see the alien when the alien gets out. That's the classified part. So they want you to know that Holloman happened, and they allowed them to use this, the eight seconds of the film but the rest of the film, the classified part, was pulled. Brazilian UFO hearings. On the 24th of June, the Brazilian Senate held public hearings on UAP. Some of the best documented cases were shown. While most of the time was spent discussing the phenomena, a few interesting pictures were put on display. Here are some of them. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe, give a like and discuss on Reddit.